Well, hello there. My name is Mountain, and today I'd like to talk to you about this. And what is this, you might ask? Well, this, my friends, is the Dusk Electrochromic Smart Sunglasses by Ampere, a Hong Kong-based manufacturer of a small but eclectic set of tech and lifestyle goods, including, and I'm not kidding, the Shower Power Pro, which their website breathily describes as the world's first app-enabled hydro-powered Bluetooth shower speaker, which was not a category I was even aware existed. But my friends, this thing has like disco lights and it is apparently powered by the flow of water flowing through it because you have to install it between your shower head and your pipe. Truly, we are living in the best timeline. But I'm not here to talk to you about the Shower Power Pro today. I'm here to talk about these sunglasses. Now, as suggested by the name and by the fact that I use the word electrochromic in the description, the Dust sunglasses have one big party trick up their sleeve or up their arm, I suppose, which is you can instantly change the darkness and the intensity of the tint simply by pushing one button on the side of the sunglasses. And this is remarkably useful in situations where you're in constantly changing light conditions from really dark to really light. And I'll talk about some of those scenarios in a minute. Beyond this, its other strengths include a pretty good battery life if all you're doing is using this button to change the intensity of the lighting or the tint on the sunglasses. But it also includes things like uh, Bluetooth features for taking calls and also listening to music. And there are a few different versions, including like a stripped down version that doesn't have the Bluetooth speaker or doesn't have the speakers built in. Uh, and then a big, you know, slightly menacing looking sports edition. Now, there are some areas for improvement. The main one being there's some pretty notable banding or darkening, and that can be a little bit annoying uh, when you're using this with LCD screens, although in normal life, it's not too, too bad. And it also doesn't have really great sound quality. So if you're picking these up to like use them as like active, you know, music listening headphones or music listening glasses in lieu of headphones, it might not be the best choice, but we'll talk about all those strengths and weaknesses here in today's review. First though, let's talk about the basics of the sunglasses. So these are 249 for the set here, which has for the dust, which has the audio. It has a little um, speakers here on the side. You can see a little speaker grill there. Um, but there's also a cheaper version, the dusk light, which has just the tint changing functions for 199. And as I mentioned, there's a more sport oriented one that has like a bigger, you know, front shade. It looks like those big wraparound style Oakleys from back in the day, um, which is 399. And these are all the normal prices, but I've often notice that these tend to be significantly discounted on the website. Now it comes with the glasses. It also comes with a magnetic charger that I'll show you how that works here in a second. Uh, cleaning cloth, um, a neoprene-ish kind of a carrying bag, and then also some switchable uh, nose bridge pieces here that you can use to adjust the height and the fit of the nose section here. Um, now there's also an optional carrying case, which is $99 separately. Uh, I'll talk about that later on here, but you don't need it. You can just charge with uh, the mag included magnetic charger here. This is proprietary. Um, and so you can't just charge it with USB-C. And there's a couple of different colorways here. So this is the black with the normal kind of, you know, black uh, sun uh, 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 lenses. But there's also apparently a navy teal uh, colorway and also like a mirrored sort of lens. Although I noticed that many of the combinations on their website either showed as like not available or sold out. So your mileage might vary. Um, and also, in, while I don't usually do affiliates or anything like that, Ampere did actually offer a discount at a certain URL uh, for $100 off during their Black Friday sale. The link is uh, included in the description below. I don't receive any money from that. Consider it if you do like these. Now, all opinions are mine. Uh, these were sent in by Ampere Tech for review, but they don't get to see this uh, review. They don't get any influence over the review, etc. All the standard disclaimers apply. With that out of the way, let's start with like who these electrochromic glasses are for and who they're not for. Well, first and foremost, and probably primarily, the main use case or main people I think that these sunglasses are gonna be for are for urban drivers or cyclists or commuters who are often going in and out of darkness or dark and light places. So for me, the number one use case, and I'll expound on this a little bit later here, is when I'm driving and there's a lot of tunnels, I go in and out of tunnels a lot, both in the city and actually even in the highway as well. I live in a fairly mountainous uh, country. Um, like it, it's, it goes from very bright light to like pitch dark and just being able to change the tint at 
the press of a button is super handy instead of you having to take your glasses on and off, etc. I think another set of people for whom this might be useful for or a good fit for is like if you're a person who can never seem to have the right kind of tint on your glasses. I do know a few people have like several different kinds of sunglasses depending on the intensity of the sun situation they're facing. I am not one of those though I did say, you know, the, 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 the urban use case applies to me, but I do know a few people, so that's uh, you, this would be a good fit. And then finally, if you're sort of like a gadget or, you know, tech, tech type of person and you kind of like the idea of electrochromic smart sunglasses, uh, this may be a, an interesting choice for you. There's not that many options in the field, but it might be a good one. Now, who it's not for? Okay, so if you're looking for folding sunglasses, these don't fold, like, I mean, they don't get a fold in half and get a smaller. Um, if you're looking for fashionable sunglasses, now obviously fashion is in the eye of the beholder. These are not ugly looking sunglasses, but I certainly don't think that they're gonna you know, win any like high fashion awards. Um, and probably some classic styles of sunglasses will be better if you're a real fashionista. And finally, those looking for really good audio from their you know, sound enabled uh, sunglasses, you're probably gonna get better audio out of something like the Bose Tempo or something like that. The audio quality of these aren't, isn't that great. So in terms of design, these are very kind of a classical Wayfarer style sunglasses with a slightly, you know, kind of, um, I'm gonna say Wayfarer, <laughs> Wayfarer style shape that gets a little bit um, out a little bit more at the top here. They're all black, though, like I said, there's a navy teal colorway. There's a mirrored sunglass, mirrored version available in some of the uh, options there. It has a, it's all plastic construction. Um, even the lenses are, are, are plastic or some sort of plastic there. Uh, it has um, two little holes for the speakers uh, on each arm. There's two buttons. Uh, you can see here's one button. And here we go. The other button here, two on each. A little uh, charging contactless, or I guess it has the contact, but a little uh, place to charge and the magnetic charger affixes to here with the power of magnets. How do they work? Um, and that's really it. And then as I mentioned, there's a bridge uh, a nose piece here and that you can actually pop out and swap with some of the included options that they uh, give you in the box here. Now, fashion is in the eye of the beholder, always, always. But that said, I would describe these as more utilitarian in nature as opposed to fashionable. Um, I, they're not metal, they're plastic and it's a little bit of a matte plastic, which I personally don't mind, but you know, uh, if you compare them to something like a Ray-Bans, which are kind of the traditional Wayfarer style, or maybe the class quintessential Wayfarer style glasses, like they're gonna just be just a little bit higher quality, or not higher quality, just a different kind of luster of plastic. These are not cheap or anything like that. I just think that if you're a fashionista, you're gonna be a little bit better served with more traditional sunglasses. In terms of size, they only come in uh, one size uh, and they fit okay. Uh, for me, I found that my face was just a little wider than maybe these would like, you know, accommodate. So they would, uh, would accommodate like without flexing. So they ended up flexing out just a little bit on me. Um, they didn't look bad, but uh, I do wish that they kind of came in a slightly wider size. But that said, like there's a lot of flex in the frame. So it doesn't look like really weird when it's kind of, you know, it wasn't uncomfortable on my face either. They're pretty light. Um, in terms of glasses though, of course, uh, you know, if you compare them to like non Bluetooth type sunglasses, uh, you know, there are certainly lighter versions out there. Uh, but I think for what you get with the tech in here and the fact that they're made of plastic kind of makes them like very reasonably lightweight. Um, material wise, as I said, it's a little bit plasticky. It's all plastic and it feels a little plasticky. I found that um, this plastic tends to show like your fingerprint oils and kind of get a little bit of scuffs like you can maybe see here. Here, there is a little bit of permanent scuffing. Like I take, I don't like baby these. I don't abuse them, but I don't baby them either. So like I would you know, just kind of toss them in the in the car that has a little sunglass holder above the, like it mounted on the roof. And you know, they would get a little bit of marks here and there. Like I said, there is a 
little neoprene pouch, you can put them in there if you want. The front of the glasses, also uh, the little electrochromic section. It's gonna be a little hard to see how you can see right there. They did get a little bit of like scuffs that wouldn't come out, like they're actually scuff scuffs. Don't need to baby these, but they will show more wear than you might be expecting from some types of sunglasses, depending on what you're used to here. But in terms of durability, like uh, I like that they're so lightweight and they, they have some flex them, so I don't have to worry about them breaking. I guess maybe if you sat on them, they would break. But I just usually, you know, sit, throw them in the car, throw them in the bag. You can use the pouch if you're worried about that. I wouldn't worry about using the big hard uh, case, uh, though I will talk about this in a little bit. Okay, the main claim to fame is this electrochromic function that changes the intensity of the shades at the push of a button. You trigger it by pushing this left button here. There's also a way to do it from the app. I'll talk about the app later on here. It's instant. I love it. You could just go, it just cycles. There's actually four levels I got it set to. It's a little bit hard to see uh, the last, the difference between the last two here just because of the, the way I'm recording this, but there is a very noticeable difference here. The range is quite good. Like when they're uh, at their darkest, like they are dark. Like you can drive facing into the sun. I would not recommend you do that, but sometimes it's unavoidable and you just have to do that. You put them to max darkness and they're gonna be you know, pretty good for, for even driving straight on into the sun, which is not something that most of the, my other sunglasses will enable me to do. And again, that's sort of dangerous, so don't do that. There is also a car mode that you can set via the app when you connect them to the app that would prevent the tint from going beyond a certain level of darkness uh, when you're driving. I don't use that. Again, you might want to for safety reasons. You can also adjust the four steps to, you can adjust the four levels to your liking. Like I just use the presets out of the box. I've never changed them, but you can do that very, via the app as well. Um, the, maybe the only uh, thing I wish is like when they were out there like lightest level, as you can see, there's still a little bit of a tint through them. I wish they were like clear. That would be really cool, but uh, that's okay. Like it's not too, too bad. And this is just a little bit better than you know, clear glass, or a little bit darker than clear glasses. There is a slight warm tint to the glasses. It looks a little bit, uh, here you can see here, a slight dirty warm tint, not in a bad way dirty warm, but slight dirty warm tint to the glasses when they're at their lightest. As you darken them, the color temperature gets progressively cooler, I would say. Uh, it doesn't get really cool, but it's definitely not as warm through the lenses when they get darker there. And in terms of optical quality, so if all you've ever owned are cheap sunglasses, or if you look at these in isolation, the optical clarity quality of the sun of the glasses is fine with one notable exception, which is the banding issues. I'm gonna talk about that next, but if you set that aside, transmission wise or whatever, it's all fine. But if you do compare them like side by side with more expensive glasses like uh, Ray-Bans or Oakley's or whatever, depending on what you're looking at in terms of polarized sunglasses, um, you will, I personally find that the optical quality or transmission of those other sunglasses is slightly superior. Those are generally at slightly higher price points. So not exactly, it depends on what price you buy these at. Uh, but again, in isolation, these are completely fine. You're not gonna be unhappy with them other than maybe the banding issues, which I'll talk about here in a second. And last thing about the lenses is like, these are the lenses. You can't swap them, you can't get prescriptions, you can't do anything like that. So if you're a prescription eyeglass wearer or something like that, I am not. Uh, this, is, this may not work for you if you need to use the prescription lenses on there. So let's talk about the good and bad of these uh, electrochromic functionality, right? So as I said, it is super useful when you are moving in and out of dark situations and light situations. I drive through tunnels and between tall buildings and the light situation early morning and late at night when I'm going to work and when I'm coming home from work is super varied and actually the contrast in before and out of before and after and inside of a tunnel is actually really problematic for for a lot of drivers here so like i would have my glasses i push them up on my face and then or put them down on the you know on the console next to me or where i'm going in and out of the tunnel because it's too dark inside of the tunnel with the glasses or else you get like really weak tint sunglasses so that you can see in the tunnel but then they're not that effective when they're out or whatever uh, this solved all those problems you just hit this button and then you're you know when you're driving into the most uh, strict or hard, harshest of light hit it again uh, perfectly you can see perfectly inside the tunnel and i love that the response time is instantaneous and it just cycles there like four steps is a really good kind of granularity level like i said out of the box the granularity level worked really great for me um 
and no more like fumbling for my glasses. That was the other problem. It's like I would, you know, when I would just have regular glasses, I would have to put them in the console next to me or in the, the cup holder. And then you try and like fumble to get them on there while you got one hand on the wheel. It's super dangerous. On these, just leave them on my face. Um, also uh, useful, I think, um, if you're biking or something like that, any kind of urban commute situation, even like if you're walking and sometimes like, you know, depending on the path, if you're in a big city and like the light comes between those big tall buildings and it just hits you, it's, ah, you know, and then you're in the dark again, etc. You're going to the subway, what have you. Okay, enough about the good. Let's talk about the bad because there is one thing that I think is not that great about these glasses, which is there is noticeable banding um, in the glasses at some of the darker levels when you look at like an LCD screen. Um, so these are polarized glasses. I have plenty of other polarized sunglasses, Oakleys and Ray-Bans and all of that. It is not the same, like many normal polarized glasses um, work perfectly fine with LCD screens. Some do not, and I think most of us are familiar with phenomenon with obviously like you take like a camera circular polarizer, put it in front of an LCD screen and turn it. At some point, you're gonna, it's gonna go dark because it's, you know, polarizing the light. Uh, it is not that, like I would, you know, I would expect like if you, if it were like that, you would turn it and then like everything would go dark and you'd be like, okay, well just don't turn your head that way because hopefully you're not looking at LCD screens this way. It's not that, it's, it actually reminds me of if you've ever used a variable density, uh, variable neutral density filter, like for video work or whatever, where they have two opposing ones that you turn them and you can sometimes get like an X banding, um, darkening, and you don't see like a dark index, especially some of the cheaper ones. So that's kind of what it's like on this sometimes at some of the darker levels. Now you're not gonna be able to see it on here because I don't have an LCD screen that I should have uh, maybe brought one, but it's sort of like a diagonal bit of banding. Now, at the light levels, it is fairly non, you, you can't really notice it. At the darker levels, you can definitely notice it, but it depends a little bit on the LCD screen. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, Mountain, that's cool. I don't usually stare at LCD screens while I'm wearing sunglasses because I don't wear my sunglasses inside a building where there's computers. Fair enough. I drive a car which has an electronic dashboard like, and in front of, you know, behind the steering wheel. So when you look at it, when you're wearing these, when you're driving, you see like it almost looks like a weird diagonal brown, almost burnt looking spot or band on the, on the LCD screen, kind of in the lower left. It's a little bit diagonal, it sort of depends. If you tilt your head, it kind of shifts slightly here and there. Now again, at the light levels, it is completely fine. It's just, you don't really notice it at light levels. At like level two, it starts to get annoying. Level three, you definitely see it. And level four, you, you know, again, you see it. It doesn't impair the usability. It's not that bad, but it's just, Something to consider about these glasses if you're planning to use them with a car with an electronic dash or in any other situation where you're planning to like intensely look at LCD screens while wearing these glasses in their darkest or in their darker settings, you might get annoyed by that. Um, if you're just walking around in the street or you know outside in nature or whatever, not looking at LCD screens, you don't see that. So I think that's generally fine. Um, and fortunately, like I said, it's only visible at the darkest one. So you can just hit this. What I will do is I'll just, you know, hit it to the lightest, uh, you know, push the button a couple times, put it to its lightest, and then it goes away or something like that. When I'm looking at the dash, um, you know, time when it's unavoidable is when you're driving in really bright conditions, you need the glasses in their darkest. And then you're looking at the dash, you see there's this annoying brown banding diagonal. So that wasn't Great, great. Um, and another thing that maybe I think I would mention, this is not bad, but it is something that is n noticeable, which is as you darken the glasses, the intensity of the darkness is actually darker up at the top versus at the bottom. So if you, if you imagine like bifocals or something like that, or like those old school sunglasses where like they're really dark up at the top and then like you have a gradient and they're really light at the bottom. That's what the darkening effect is here. It's definitely a gradient of more darker down to the lighter. It's a little bit hard to see uh, on this, you know, on this surface here, but it definitely is something that you will notice when you're wearing the glasses. Um, but anyway, um, it's not bad. It's just not even. 
and it's clearly intentional. So if you like that, great. If you don't like that, next talking about battery life, uh, seven days, it says officially in their spec, seven days of paired tinted adjustment, four hours of listening, charges to 80% in 15 minutes, 100% in 45 minutes. Look, if you, you don't have to pair these glasses to the app to use them. I do not pair them. I will talk, show you the pairing here in a minute here, but in reality, like if you just use them like this, like I've had these in the car for like months and I haven't charged them. They're, they're, they're great. It's, I don't know exactly how this tech works, but I, I suspect it's like e-ink where like you only need to use battery power when you're actually changing the darkness level. So if you, you know, you only char change it every, you know, a few times every, when you're driving or whatever, you don't have to, I don't know, I haven't charged these in months, it's fine. If you're listening to music and talking the phone with that, you're gonna get like four hours out of it. Like I said, there's a battery case that you can use to charge that or the uh, wireless, uh, or not the wireless, the magnetic charger as well here. Um, the charging, uh, you know, it's got a nice braided, uh, you know, charging cable, USB-C, and then this little proprietary magnetic uh, bit here, don't lose it because otherwise you're gonna have to, you're gonna be in trouble. You're not gonna be able to charge your glasses. Um, I would love to see USB C integrated into this in the future, though I don't know if there's actually enough space inside of the, um, uh, of the arm to actually be able to integrate that in the future. But anyway, um, when I travel, I brought these in a couple of trips. I didn't bother bringing any charging cable, it was fine. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is this use as a music player. As I mentioned, you can connect these via your phone, or connect these to your phone via Bluetooth, and you can listen to music on them. It doesn't have any fancy bone conducting technology or whatever. It's just literally these little speaker holes, and you can listen to music through them. Now, because there's nothing fancy about that, uh, that means that other people could hear what you're listening to and it can get, you know, kind of <laughs> louder and annoying. So don't be that person. Don't listen to them in a crowded place like trains or quiet rooms or... Anyway, truthfully, the sound quality is not great at all. If you've watched any of my other videos, you see I often have like three or four pairs of headphones in any of my bags, earbuds and headphones or whatever. Uh, I wasn't expecting much out of these in terms of audio quality. There's no bass or depth. It's fairly tinny, exactly what you would expect from looking at these things. Uh, I guess they will work if you have nothing else on hand or and you really want to listen to music or if you're in a situation where you're like vigorously exercising and you're worried about your earbuds falling off or it would be awkward to wear like those wraparound type you know ear ear thing earbuds which have like the loop in the back and wear sunglasses because definitely I can understand you have limited real estate behind your ear. So actually one of the solid use cases I found for that is like when I'm riding a bike. Uh, put these on, you got your, you got your helmet on already you put these on because you need sunglasses. You're riding your bike so you're not disturbing others. So you can listen to music-ish at loud volumes. You still hear what's going on. You're not disturbing other people around you. Uh, this button here on the right-hand side, so the one on the left triggers the electrochromic lens thing, and the one on the right actually pauses, fast-forwards, reverses all the music, all the standard stuff. Click once to pause, play, twice to fast forward, three to go backwards. So it's really easy to just pause it, you know, while you're So riding the bike was another great use case I found for these sunglasses. So let's see if we can play some music on here. So you can see, this is at its max. Um, and you just control it via the phone, there's no um, volume adjustment on the uh, on the sunglasses. So, as you might expect, uh, it's not the greatest sound, uh, but it gets the job done. And obviously, uh, like I said, in a pinch, it's better than nothing. You can also do things like uh, press this button to use your phone assistant. You can also take phone calls and you know hang up and, and answer and hang up with them, uh, same way as you would with any kind of Bluetooth enabled earbuds. Um, so my thing here is if you're already wearing the glasses and your phone is packed away, again, think like riding your bike or something like that, uh, this works fine in a pinch. Otherwise, it's pretty much inferior to any other, like to almost any earbuds. Like wireless Bluetooth earbuds are like basically free these days. And even the ones at like the $20, $20 or $50 price points, like the sound quality is going to be leagues ahead of this just because they're inside of your ears. I did briefly mention um, that there is an app. Uh, here is the Android version of that app here. Uh, there's not too much you can do on here. Let's see if you can actually watch the glasses here. You can, uh, oops, 
See, I can change the tint color of the glasses. On here, you can make it instantly light, dark, and there is a way to set that car mode um, and turn it off. And there's also like a little locator function uh, there that it'll like ring the glasses if you lost them, but it has to be connected to the glasses via Bluetooth. So if you're out of range and you're looking for them, you know, tough luck. Beyond that, there's not really anything to do inside of this app other than, I guess, like look at their socials. I don't use the app for anything, as I mentioned. And you can uh, turn off the pairing just by pressing and holding this button there, and then you could just use them on pairs regularly. I mentioned that there is a charging case. This is $99, sold separately, uh, has a battery built inside of it, so you can drop the glasses in and they will charge. Uh, so you kind of go like this and then uh, the glasses will contact and it'll charge. You can see it's charging via the indicator there. You can press this button on the front to see how much charge you have here. Charges itself via USB, I think, USB-C, excuse me. It provides 40 hours worth of extra charging for this thing. Uh, it also has wireless charging, which I thought was sort of uh, interesting. I wasn't expecting that functionality. I almost didn't notice it until I read it on the package. I was like, oh my goodness. I tried it out and it does in fact, I wish the glasses had wireless charging, but I understand why that's physically very difficult. A uh, little spot here that you can put a air tag if you want to find the the glasses case. The inside has like this kind of, it's, it's hard and it's got like this soft flecked or well, I don't know, flecked felt. The case is quite large. Um, I mean, it's like the size of a Bluetooth speaker itself. So I don't know that I, like I, I, I don't bring this with me anywhere. As I mentioned before, like the battery life is fantastic and I don't use the uh, sunglasses paired with the apps. The only reason I would suggest, the only people I would suggest to get this is if like you are intensely using uh, the connected features and listening to music on these, which again, I don't think is necessarily the best use of these. Um, otherwise, just you know, bring this little cable, it's so light and you can charge anywhere. It charges so quickly, I don't think you need the, the case. Summing it up, like these are actually pretty cool for like their one party trick. And for me and my use case uh, of driving in the city, it actually works really great. Um, all the rest of the features I think are a little bit superfluous. I didn't really use them that much. So I would suggest like if you like this uh, kind of functionality or this idea appeals to you, just get the light version that just has the sunglass function. Uh, you don't need the case and you know, it's pretty cool for the price. And like I said, there's a discount code uh, in the description. I certainly will be keeping them in my car uh, to use in you know my morning and evening commutes. So, if you are in the market for some glasses like these, what are some other things you might want to consider? Well, I don't have any other glasses that change their tint. In fact, I'm not really much of a sunglass expert, but what I can do is show you a few other sunglasses I have. Let's start with, uh, well, um, a classic pair of folding Ray-Ban Wayfarers, because, you know, Wayfarer style sunglasses. I like these. Um, I'll put the exact model number or whatever in the description because they fold flat, um, but when you open them up, they open up into, um, you know, kind of Wayfarer stylish, uh, sorry, um, Wayfarer style sunglasses. They're pretty sturdy. Um, the plastic is a little bit, you know, glossier. Like you can see what I mean? Like these are glossy. These are a little bit more matte. I don't mind. Both are very nice. Uh, optical quality of the glass, like I said, slightly better uh, on these than on this, but obviously they just, like their gimmick is they fold up, right? Um, and they're fairly light and they fit in this little case here. And that is their story. So I keep, I bring these, I used to bring these when I was traveling. Now on glasses that I use more now when I'm traveling are these Roav. Rove sunglasses. These are my currently packed um, in my always packed, ready to go one bag travel bag. These are super thin. You can see fold also, and they give you, there's several different styles. I don't remember. I think this one's the Earhart or uh, the Atlas. I forget which one. I'll put that there. If you compare them, they're slightly different style. There are some more Wayfarer-esque versions of these. These are not exactly that. You can see here, these also have sort of the darker tint that goes a little bit lighter at the bottom here. What I like about these is these are super thin. Um, they work really well, like really well for taking care of the sun. Um, and uh, they are so flat, so tiny. And uh, 
you can always just keep them in this little nice little rubber case and just drop them in my bag. So when I get to a destination and I'm driving a rental car or whatever, I always have these. So that's it, my friends. If you have any questions about these, go ahead and leave those in the comments. And if I can, I will answer them. And if you have any bags, this is usually a bag review channel. Don't ask me about sunglasses, but if you have any things or bags that you'd like me to review, go and leave those in the comments below. And if I can, I will review them. Thank you very much.